Okay, so um, welcome. Good morning. This is the webinar on the identity recruitment package. Um, as it says on the screen, three for one report system to boost the power of selection, onboarding and retention. So this is what we're going to look at this morning. Hopefully everything is going to work. Um, just a quick introduction, my name is Laura Pollock, I'm one of the uh, consultants here at Quest Partnership, so I'm going to be taking you through this, this webinar. A um, little bit of background or an overview, um, this, is, this session is scheduled to last 20 minutes um, with a 10 minute question and answering session at the end, um, so if you do have questions feel free to ask them as we go through, um, but I will, I will be answering them at the end of the session. Um, as it says on the screen there, we're going to be looking at kind of three main areas, uh, a little bit of background about personality questionnaires and why we use them in recruitment, um, the package itself, and I'll give you a little bit more introduction into uh, identity, the personality questionnaire. Some of you might be aware of the questionnaire, others less so, so I'll give you kind of a bit of background about that as well. And finally, um, we're going to look at why, why this package and why these tools are useful in recruitment, selection, um, and also the onboarding process. So quite a lot to get through. So to start with, um, why do we use personality questionnaires in recruitment? Now there's loads and loads of literature um, out there that we can look at, some you know, that says about ability tests and how, how we can also use personality questionnaires um, to boost the power of our assessments. Ultimately, what this diagram is showing on the screen is what we want to do is kind of work out, is this candidate going to make for a success, suitable or successful hire? And there's lots of different ways that we can look at this. So as the, uh, the flow diagram shows, they may need a certain level of qualification, skills, abilities um, are all really important. But what we also kind of want to find out is about their competence, enthusiasm, motivation, um, preferences and working styles. And that's where the personality questionnaires really come in. That's where they, have, they can offer way more than just using ability tests. Ability of tests will tell us if that person has the skills, um, but we need the kind of synergy with the personality questionnaires as well. So that's what we're going to focus on. So first of all, um, I guess I'm going to just go through a little bit of what the benefits of using personality questionnaires are. And as it says there in those lovely inverted comments, it's an additional tool in the toolbox. It's not the be all and end all, but having an additional tool um, can be really useful, especially when we're doing interviews and things like that. So this, I apologize, there's quite a lot of text on this screen, so I'm going to kind of give you a brief overview um, of some of the benefits of personality questionnaires. They've been shown to predict performance, um, and that performance is not just about ability. As I just said in the last slide, true performance is kind of a synergy of many, many variables, um, including these behavioral preferences, and that's what we're going to try and um, predict from our personality questionnaires. It's said in some cases that motivation um, times capability is our performance and we need both. So being able to measure both elements is really essential. Performance is multidimensional. So what the profile does is it splits personality into three sections, people, thinking and drivers, um, and all of which are really important to overall performance. And we want to be able to measure kind of scales within that to really find out a bit more depth. Whilst often we use personality questionnaires at more senior level, um, they can be used throughout any role within an organisation. So finding out a little bit more about an individual's working style um, or behaviours can be really interesting for, for understanding that performance. But especially in senior roles, where everybody probably has a high level of skills, qualifications, experience and capability, what is, it that di what is it that makes the difference between somebody who's particularly successful in a senior role versus somebody who perhaps is not? And it's having, I think, a balance of all three of those sections mentioned above, so people, thinking and also um, the motivational drivers. If we're missing one of those sections, then it's really going to kind of jeopardise how effective we can be as a leader or as a manager or just even technically within a, within a role. There's also a lot of evidence um, that personality relates very highly to different competencies. So what we're going to look at in a bit is um, how we can measure competencies and how different scales relate with those competencies. So we're taking somebody's um, self-perceptions, considering their behavioural responses and aligning these to 
either universal competencies or it might be more specific competencies, for instance, leadership um, or team working, people orientation. Personality questionnaires typically um, look at a normative approach. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware of what this kind of means, but what it's doing is rather than just considering you, it's considering you as an individual against a much wider norm or, uh, of the working population. So that's taking a sample um, of thousands of people and looking at where do your preferences lie in comparison to other people. So we'll go into a bit more detail about that um, as we look at the actual profile. Personality also wants to measure style. So it's looking at how we've responded to the questionnaire, uh, whether we might have been a little bit less self-critical, maybe a bit too, too critical of ourselves. And the really important one here as well is looking, especially in recruitment, is looking at um, social desirability. So we want to be seen you know, in a really positive light. And sometimes the way we respond to a questionnaire um, we may want to see ourselves a little bit better than perhaps we are. So the personality questionnaire identity will pick up on that if there is some um, potential exaggeration within it responses. As a tool itself, um, there's also other secondary psychological models that can also be generated as part of um, the profile. So for instance, some of these are team roles, learning styles and type preferences, which is quite similar to uh, the MBTI where we're kind of classifying people as one side of the scale versus another. Now, we're not going to go into too much detail about that, but if it is something you're interested in learning a bit more, then let me know at the end and I can give you a bit more insight. With any recruitment decision, what we want to do is we want to, you know, get a really appropriate individual within the organisation. So using personality tools can also help us reduce, reduce the risk of poor hires. So it's highlighting specific areas we can probe um, and encouraging us to gather some supportive evidence before making decisions. So when we look at the pre-interview report specifically, I'll go into a bit more detail about that. And finally, as it says at the bottom of the page there, it's encouraging a more open discussion or, or interview. It's likely that within the interview we'll have set questions, um, but it's also good if we be, we're able to take this tool in advance to think about where in the limited time that we have, can we focus our questions? It might be gathering supportive evidence, or it might be actually flipping the question around. If somebody says they have a certain preference, perhaps we want to look at the other side of the scale and see how they would deal with that. So it can really give us the opportunity to learn more about that individual that perhaps we wouldn't have done if we didn't have the tool there to help us. A really nice thing I like to say at this point as well is the thing with with a personality questionnaire is it's not it's not the be all and end all but it's an additional something we can use in addition um, for instance to start a discussion to simulate so there it's written springboard for discussion to start off that discussion um, and if it fell on the floor halfway through the interview and we're having a really good discussion it's not the end of the world but at least it helps us almost to get to get started so let's move on very quickly, a brief overview um, about identity. So identity is a self-perception questionnaire. Um, so it's looking at how one sees themselves. So it's filled in by, by the individual, um, asking questions about, about themselves and how they see themselves. It is a BPS accredited personality questionnaire. So the BPS is the British Psychological Society um, and it's our professional kind of governing body. So it's gone through rigorous um, research and validation studies to check um, as a psychometric tool that it is reliable and valid for what we're measuring. As I've already mentioned, um, we use a normative approach. So we're comparing one individual to the working population. Um, and that's kind of, we use a normal distribution curve to, to work that out. So most people will have typical preferences. And what we're looking at is where preferences are much stronger in one direction or the other. It's quite a long questionnaire. It's got 216 questions. And the reason for that, again, is to do with the reliability and the validity of the study uh, of the questionnaire. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that people are being accurate in the way that they respond. And therefore, we need a substantial amount of questions to do that. But actually, when we go through it, you can get through it in about 35 minutes, because what we want people to do is answer very quickly um, kind of initial responses rather than taking too long to think about it. 
it's a work-based questionnaire as well. So we're putting people in the mind frame of this is how you are at work. Think about yourself at work. And as I've already mentioned, it splits into three sections and six subsections. So people thinking emotional drivers, and then we break this down further. Um, so, for instance, the people section looks at how we fooled ourselves versus how we focus on others. The tool itself is underpinned by the big five model of personality. So you may have heard of this. Um, it's looking at kind of the difference so conscientiousness, um, extroversion, neuroticism, all of those different aspects, which is it's been shown time and time again um, to be the five factor model. Of personality and of course it has a bureau of reports for assessment and development so from filling in the questionnaire um, there's multiple different applications that we can we can use the questionnaire and this one is focusing on recruitment and selection all right so I'm conscious that's quite a whistle stop tour um, of personality questionnaires and identity itself um, we're going to move on to to discussing the recruitment package and actually what, what that is. So essentially, it's three different reports for three different purposes. The first one there is the identity pre-interview report, which is probably quite, quite self-explanatory. Um, it's for use within interview settings. Um, the second one is the identity feedback report. Now, this is for the candidates um, after the process has been completed. It's just giving them feedback on their responses um, and we'll go into more detail in a second about that. And the third one is um, quite a new report that we've started to introduce, looking at the identity onboarding report. Now, the reason that this report came about was we were finding with a lot of our clients, they had quite a high attrition rate um, and retention within the first year especially was, was quite a challenge. So what we've tried to do is introduce um, an onboarding report. So it's kind of an induction report or a new starter report. That, that sort of gets a new, new appointee um, discussing with a manager kind of their strengths and, and setting out a personal development plan from, from the start when they join an organization, um, rather than perhaps waiting three or six months. So I'll go into more detail about that one. That one I think is really, really interesting one um, and is the real key for retention aspect of this. So first things first. The identity pre-interview report. As it says there, it's been designed to distill the identity profile, which is a very long 36 trait um, profile, into core indicators and competencies to support your interview. It provides you with a rich insight into your candidate's preferred ways of working and enables you to plan questions even before meeting them. So it's a great way, as I've said before, to structure our interviews, um, really make the most use of the time. It's intended for our hiring managers or recruiters. Um, and it includes text interpretation and probing questions. So we'll have a look in, in more detail about these. Um, being psychologists, we're very interested in behavioural based questions, um, situational. So thinking about an individual within that situation and also relating it back to performance, because ultimately that's what we're trying to predict um, during our recruitment and selection processes. So here's a nice little little picture. Okay, so as part of the pre-interview report, first of all, we have a quick look summary page. Um, and as, as it suggests, it's a summary of what's within the report. The top bit here where it says accuracy of response um, is that measure of validity and reliability. So it's looking at how that individual has responded to the questionnaire. Um, and in this case, it's suggesting it's been quite accurate. So they've probably been quite consistent in the way they've approached the different questions. You can then see that we've got eight areas of competence that we're considering. So negotiating, customer facing, empathy, intellect, and so forth. And to the right hand side of this slide, you'll see areas that say further probing, strong or OK. So we're sort of banding our, um, our candidates into areas we might want to look at further. Now, depending on the role, um, it might be that we want to choose certain, certain areas of focus over others. As the little, um, what would you call that thing says there, um, we can bespoke reports as well. So we can tailor them to your own competencies. So for instance, if it's a, a certain level or a certain um, department like sales, 
it might be that you want different competencies to consider, um, but these are our standard eight competencies within the pre-interview report. So if that is something of interest to you, then do, do get in touch with me after and we can discuss that a little further. All right, so now we get to the nitty gritty detail. So we're gonna look at the negotiating skills and listening skills competence. Um, this page can look a little bit daunting when you first look it at, but actually it's, it's quite easy to go through. So this individual, um, Sam Sample, came out as a further probing for, for this uh, scale. Now on the page, you'll see that there's the traits. So this is the, there's five traits here, um, which are part of the wider profile. And then there's interpretation section. So a bit of sort of textual um, explaining the profile or the preferences and then probing questions at the bottom. So for instance, if we look here um, and think about why perhaps this individual has come out as further probing, the um, key things that would strike me to begin with is this really high independence um, in terms of listening and negotiating. This individual has suggested that they quite like to be different, prefer their own way, might have strong views, um, which we might want to look at further. So for instance, some of the questions might be about um, working with others. I mean, unfortunately on this page, it's, it's cut that off. Um, but it might be, yeah, we want to ask questions around how, how do they find working in a team? Um, give me an example of an occasion um, where you've had to follow a majority. How did you feel about this? Just to find supportive evidence of whether that preference really is as strong as they're suggesting. Um, and also how they feel they could act in the alternate dimension. Similarly here, um, the influencing scale has come out as um, number seven. Now that's suggesting a slight preference. So when we look at, at the way the um, scales are structured, the white boxes in the center, five and six, um, is typical of most individuals. So no strong preference in either direction. As we move more to the left and to the right hand side, it's suggesting a stronger preference right to the outside is really strong. So it's not a case that one to 10 relates to one being bad, 10 being good. That's, that's not the case. It's much more, most people will be around the five or six mark. And if somebody is either um, direction from that, then that's indicating a preference and the strength of the preference depends on how far away they are from the middle. So here, it might be asking questions around um, when it was challenging to sell an idea. How did you convince them? What did you do to be effective? What would you do differently? Things like that. So they're quite reflective questions um, rather than hypothetical. What would you do in this situation? It's much more focusing on um, learning from past behavior being key to future performance. So that's the sort of general structure and it goes through the report. Again, just goes through in this very similar format throughout. And here's one if you want to have a little go yourself. Um, this one now is looking at motivation um, and the, the red circles. If I was looking at this for the first time, these are the kind of areas I think perhaps is why it's coming out as further probing. So less determined um, potentially. So maybe more willing to compromise on goals. Um, stronger belief in the effects of chance or luck and a very uh, strong preference for less variety seeking. So more comfortable with familiar work, uh, routine, and perhaps not so much of a preference for, for trying new things. So those I, these are my kind of areas I would be thinking about if, if I wanted to consider motivation and finding out a little bit more from that individual. Okay, just conscious of time. Um, we're gonna move on to the onboarding report. So this is um, a unique solution to help managers to understand their new team member. So it's intended for the manager, but all the new, also the new appointee. Um, it could be used as part of a broader induction or onboarding process. And what it's doing is it's gonna look at that individual's key strengths, potential areas to manage, and how the manager and individual can work effectively together. Now I will give you the slides at the end, I'm just conscious of time and I wanna make sure we get through everything. All right, so this report looks a little bit different. Um, 
what we do here is we're looking at traits, but we're ranking them by strength. So for this individual, um, they came out as very independent, so very strong. This is probably a um, response of one or 10. Um, and in this case, it will be 10 because it's highly independent. So what the report does is it breaks down that, that preference, um, considers it in general. So Sam will probably benefit from a good deal of autonomy and latitude. And then it considers the strength of that and also potential drawback. So for instance here, he's probably good at giving ownership and responsibility for making key decisions. And you can really get the benefit from him when you allow him to add value by challenging the norm or assuming a minority position in situations where others might not have considered an alternative perspective. On the flip side though, Sam may need some coaching to help him to consider and absorb the inputs of others, keeping an open mind to alternative views. Now the benefit of the onboarding report is that as a new manager and as an individual perhaps coming together for the first time to work together, um, it can take a little while to get to know somebody. If we have an onboarding report, it gives us almost a little overview of that individual um, before we can really spend that time to get to know them. So we really recommend having a meeting within the first week or so um, to discuss what the what the report is suggesting. Um, maybe set aside some areas um, for development, key strengths, find out a little bit more about what this person really enjoys doing, where they see their strengths, um, and also perhaps where they might need a little bit more support. So this, this page has all of their very strong preferences, um, but we also look at strong preferences and marked preferences, so where they're not quite so high. And it's a very similar format, looking at everything that has a strength also has a drawback. So it's just considering where situations or behaviours might be most effective. The third report within the package um, is the identity feedback report. So the feedback report is designed for your candidates. Um, ultimately, at the end of the process, it's giving them something to take away, whether they've been successful or unsuccessful. Um, very similar to the other reports, it's going to break it down into the six sections, um, short interpretation, and just also shows that you're, you're serious about your candidates. Um, if they've taken the time to do you know, multiple assessments, a personality questionnaire, might be ability tests, it's quite nice to give them something um, to take away even if on this occasion they haven't been successful. And here is just an overview um, of how, how that, pro, uh, that report breaks down. So for instance, this is looking at the forwarding self um, section and it gives them a little bit of text about how they've suggested they see themselves, um, some potential strengths of their style, and then also um, consideration of potential drawbacks as well. So very similar looking at, okay, if at times you might be um, over compromising your views to avoid what you perceive as confrontational offence. They may not have realised this about themselves. Um, they may not always agree with it either, but it can have that nice um, way to have a conversation with them again about, about what they're suggesting within the profile. So just to summarise, um, the recruitment package, there's the three different reports for kind of our three main stakeholders within the recruitment and selection process. So we have the uh, pre-interview report, which is for the recruitment or hiring managers, um, the onboarding report for the successful hire and their new manager or their manager, and the candidate feedback reports for all of our candidates within, within the process. Um, it's a cost-effective, all-in-one solution. So what we, at Quest Partnership, what we're really focused on, we didn't want to just give one part of the process. Instead, we see it as a much more bigger cycle that it's, recruitment is a process. It's not just one thing that we do. And therefore, we can use um, the power of personality and preference looking to, to boost that whole process, uh, that whole cycle. So the reports will help you with interviewing, reducing poor uh, risks of poor hires, settling new employees, engaging managers also with these individuals' development, and creating that positive image of your organisation amongst unsuccessful candidates. It's a really, really lovely way of um, giving them something back as well. Some of the benefits of 
the our, we feel for our identity recruitment package um, as mentioned previously identity is high quality it's been researched um, it's occupational specific so it's looking at work settings organizational settings um, and it has been proven to be accurate and predictive of performance um, it's comprehensive it's accessible and it's simple to use some of the other profiles or reports that are out there um, they try to do there's so many whistles and buttons and things on them we like to keep it simple give you the information and allow you to use it um, to really help help your organization and help your recruitment processes it can help you to make key recruitment decisions and helping to select top performers um, and there's many many applications as listed there so it might be shortlisting we really strongly recommend that you never make a decision solely based on a personality questionnaire because that would be unacceptable and unprofessional um, but it is a useful supportive tool and included um, we can brand your reports to to your organization's logos colors things like that um, and there's no extra additional cost cost for that so moving on to costs probably thinking this is going to cost a lot we after we offer a bureau service um, so here it says for untrained users so those are individuals who perhaps have never used um, personality questionnaires or psychometrics before and it includes the three reports uh, for 65 pounds per candidate plus the AT on top um, there's full support from our psychologists um, at Quest Partnership who can support you with using the questionnaires um, throughout the process option two um, is our identity account holders and this is for BPS level two trained not trainer trained users um, so that this is individuals who perhaps have done our blended learning course um, or one of the face-to-face in-house courses um, and have had some experience um, looking at personality in more depth so what it is about the personality questionnaires and how they're produced um, and once you've got that qualification then you can have your own identity um, account so there's no need to come to us to set things up you simply buy credits um, and you can use it at, at your convenience um, and as it says there again it's the the reports you also for for that one you get um, different well up to 10 to 15 reports that we now have um, and you can pick and choose which reports you want to use and as it says there, 30 to 40 pounds per candidate, depending on the amount of usage, um, so the amount of credits that you're buying. For those involved in high volume recruitment, um, we do also offer unlimited monthly solutions. So if you are gonna be involved in a high level of recruitment, um, that might be a more convenient option for you. And if it is, then please get in touch and we can discuss that further. Okay, I'm conscious of the time and uh, that, yep, we are coming to the close of this webinar. So for more information, um, do feel free to contact us directly. We are more than happy to discuss roles or requirements, um, whether there's alternative um, ability tests and things that might also be useful. Um, happy to advise and give you impartial advice um, on the different tools. Um, we'll also be able to set you up um, with the questionnaires or the tests so sending delegate names we will deal with all the admin side and ensuring that you receive your reports um, in a very time efficient manner our website www.testandassess.co.uk um, also has it's kind of a one-stop shop um, of all the tests all the personalized questionnaires products that we that we currently provide um, and you can have a look as well at the um, sample questions, sample applications and reports. Or if you, you've been quite inspired and you want to become qualified um, with the level two test user training, um, then get in touch. We are offering blended learning or face-to-face in-house courses. As I've mentioned before, it is BPS accredited um, and will allow you to have your own system to use identity as you, as you require. Um, just to say as well at this point, um, if you are interested in having a go at completing the identity questionnaire for yourself, um, do let me know if you just um, make it known at the end of the webinar and I will get the um, a link sent out to you and the reports and we can have a little discussion 
so you can see it kind of in the flesh rather than me just talking about it. So finally, um, just to say a massive thank you for listening this morning, taking the time out to attend this webinar. Um, there is a whole load of different webinars also on our website, so please feel free to check it out at www.questpartnership.co.uk. Um, if you've got questions, please, please ask them now, or if you're interested in finding out a little bit more detail, my email address is at the bottom there, which is laura at questpartnership.co.uk. Thank you for your time, um, and have a great day.